Hey guys. All right, folks, we're here today to check out the latest from Obituary, The Wrong Time. These guys have a new album coming out in 2023, but before that, you can check them out on the road right now with Cattle Decapitation, Carcass, and Amon Amarth as the headliners on a massive end of the year tour. This is like the last big balls, like, like big balls kind of tour. It's, it's a manly tour. It's a man tour. It's a manly Full tour. I mean, yeah, like, come on, Cattle Decapitation, these guys, Carcass, Amon Amarth, fuck, it's really a nice way to finish off the year as far as tours and concerts are concerned. We're going to be at the Toronto show at History. Fucking great venue. I really like that venue. Yeah, it's, it's really easy nice. to get to. It's nice. The acoustics are nice. It's a brand new venue in the city. It doesn't feel... It has parking. Either. No, it doesn't. Ha no, it, it's everything that the Rebel is not. Exactly. For those of you in Toronto, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. It's everything that the Rebel is not. All right. Obituary, the wrong time. Are you ready? Yeah. Shit is so fucking badass.
my god. That was that was manly. That was a meat-filled manly song. This song better be on the set list. Definitely, it will be. This song better be on the set list. Uh, can I go first? First of all, I want to ask you, just quickly before I go uh, first, uh, which is, I know you're not a huge death metal fan. Obviously. Uh, which means out of this show, show, <laughs> this show I'm going to be enjoying... Well, I mean, when I mean death metal, I mean like you're more traditional death metal. I know you're not a cattle decapitation. You're definitely not a carcass fan. You're not a huge obituary fan. You're going for a ah, lot of Mars. I like I like some obituary songs, yeah. including this one. But, and you've seen them live. And too. I've seen them live too. It's gonna be a night for me because I'm literally waiting for these guys and and uh, I'm on a Marth. Okay, but this one gets the stamp of approval. This one does get the stamp of approval. This was a meaty, nice song. It was. It's, it's funny because Cattle Decapitation has grown on me quite a bit from our first time checking them out on the channel. I'm actually a pretty big fan of them now, but it that that never happened with you. That just never happened with you. Carcass is from my youth. Carcass, like, fuck. But anyhow, this gets a stamp of approval. This gets a stamp of approval. Okay, so before yeah. I get your, your take on this, let me just give my take on this. So, folks, watching this at home right now, you... Uh, so, is this what Pantera would sound like if they released a death metal album? Probably, yeah. You know, that was... Probably. This is fucking groovy, man. This is very groovy, yeah. This was fuck. I was listening to this and I was like, all right, so if Far Beyond Driven from Pantera was a death metal album, this is what it would sound like, right? Right? I don't think I'm, I'm I think I don't that's think I'm probably off. why I liked it. It's because it had a lot of groove to it. It was fucking groovy. That solo was incredible. That solo was really good. That solo was super and you know nice. what's funny? After that solo, I thought, like, I wasn't looking at the, the time and I'm like, oh, is this the end? Because if it ends off on the solo... I wouldn't have no, been, the end was complete. I wouldn't have been been uh, mad if it ended up at the solo, but I really enjoyed. Now you're getting my input now, but I really enjoyed when it hit that that part where it kind of stopped and then it went back bare bones, starting with the guitar again. Because I'm like, it's building for it again. It's building for the chorus again, but it's building for some good shit. And then it hits you with like the blue pyro in the background and everything. The song is is groovy. It has that meat. And it also, it just has a simplicity to it. Yeah, you don't have to overcomplicate it. Which makes it some fucking hooky and catchy. Exactly. I, I, I'm going to say this. When it comes to obituary, I, I, I'm one of those guys that, for the most part, um, you know, they have that... I don't, I don't know if they're the originators, but they're definitely the one of the bands that's perfected that swampy Florida death metal sound. You know... Uh, if they're not the originators, they're at the very least the, the 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 grandfathers of that swampy Florida death metal sound. And the beauty about this song is that it still has the two main components of obituary sound and that in that Florida swampiness, which is the vocals. Because I, I say this a million times: when you listen to obituary, the, the moment the vocals kick in, you you if you didn't know before, you know then. Who's on the vocals? Who's on the mic? It's such a unique characteristic of the band that you cannot you, you cannot separate them. So that is still there, regardless of how simple it is, how how hooky it is, how catchy it is. Um, he didn't push his range as much as I've seen in other songs, but I, the song didn't really need it to be pushed. It just needed to kind of be in the pocket. So that element is there, and then the second element is that 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 grime that the guitar sound has. That that slight distortion, but it's not full on distortion. It's kind of like kind of pregnant, but with yeah. distortion. That is a trademark sound of obituary. It doesn't matter if you're listening to their first album, to their last album, to any album in between. You're always gonna get that guitar sound, that that tone, that tonality. It's so much them. So when you look at at a band that's created a, a fingerprint sound for themselves and has that unique vocal style to go with it. Those two elements always going to be obituary, and I think if you're if you're the band and you want to release a song that's a little bit more groovy, that has a little bit more of a like it's not just headbanging, it has a side to side bounce to it. Those two elements have to be there, because if they're not there, then we're back to the issue that I had with this latest Amon Marth album, which was there was no chug, and, and and like you can go as far as you want to go, but you got to keep something. That is the reason why people listen to your band to begin with. Like you don't want to, you, you don't want to go and completely reinvent the and wheel. For Marth, that was the chug. Yeah, for Monomar, everybody, every band, in my opinion, has a has has some uniqueness that makes them that separates them from everybody else. Otherwise, like otherwise, what's the point of listening to one or listening to the other? Right, if well, everybody's yeah, sounds yeah. the same. 
So for me, with the Monomarth, is definitely the chug. It wasn't there on this latest record, unfortunately. Actually, hoping on the the show, you know. Uh, the show is different. They'll play like three or four from the new record. Uh, the uh, put your back into the or like they'll play those. A, a live show is completely different. They're still gonna play the Pursuit stuff. of Vikings and Twilight of the Thunder Gods. I'm so hoping, it's, it's, yeah. Hey, even if there's one or two that you don't like. Like it's surrounded by greatness, so like there, there's you can't go wrong. So, but anyhow, going back to this track, I, I really enjoyed this different feel of obituary. Still with the, with the guitar tuning and tone that you get from their swampy death metal floor to swampy death metal sound. Still with the vocals, but more hooky, more catchy, more groovy. Not as like like this song. You're not necessarily deep into the swamp. You're, you're on the edge of the swamp. You know what I mean? You're on the edge of the swamp. Uh, you're catching some critters on the edge of the swamp. You're not, you're not balls deep in, into, the, into the mud, fighting the gators. Swamp people. I watched that show, by the way. Well, the swamp people? Yeah, it has subtitles because nobody fucking knows what they're saying. They're speaking in English, but like... Is it in Florida? Yeah! Like, no, you know, you, was, you can understand gonna, a fucking word I was going to make a joke, too, when you were like... Sw uh, Florida, I think it's in Florida. I don't think Florida, it's in... Florida swamp, I'm like, it's very redundant. I mean, Florida and Swamp, they go together like, I don't know, cheese and wine? Peanut butter and jelly. I was gonna... Yeah, that one too. All right, I fucking love this song. So now enough about me. I one of them Swamp people. You should see one of them, them guys from Swamp people. Them guys. One of them boys with no fucking teeth and he talks like that. I'm gonna get some gators. I'm, telling you now, I'm gonna, gonna get some about, gators, but I'm gonna get some gators. Gotta be about. Right, right, we get some rifle for some gators. Gotta uh, be about 30,000 gators in there. Oh, they're not as clear as you just sounded. Honestly, really? this fucking has subtitles on it. Is it like Jeff Dunham, but he's drunk and he's trying to do the puppet? So he's making the mouth move, and they but have he's no not teeth. saying anything? Some of them have no teeth. So it's all fucking gums, which is probably great for the blowjob, but not so much great when you're trying to speak on a fucking TV show. Anyhow, not that I have personal experience with that, but anyhow. Gum, yeah. uh, so, uh... Um, the gum job? <laughs> gum job. <laughs> well, at least there will be no teeth, which means no biting. I, think um, it, I don't think it's yeah, okay. whatever. So don't knock it until you try it. So what's your what's your? What's I'm gonna it? knock it because I know I'll never try it. Hey, one day you're gonna get old, and so will your lady. So you never know. Um, <laughs> uh, so thoughts on this? <laughs> yeah, I'm just keeping it real. It is what it is. <laughs> Dude, we all we all get up there in age, you know. <laughs> Anyways. Um, fuck, you caught me off guard. You gotta watch Swamp People. I don't want to watch Swamp People. <laughs> I really don't. Um, if I want to watch people wasting their lives... Oak They're Island. not wasting their... Uh, those, those, the show is back, by the way, for season 12 or 11 or for whatever. For Oak Island or Swamp it, People? Uh, b both are on, no, but uh, Oak Island just started. Uh -huh. Anyways, uh, give us your take. No, I enjoyed the song. I, I, gotta, I, I gotta say, the, the song with the simplicity and the chunk and everything in between... Uh, I mean, this this was some good shit. This this falls into more of my wheelhouse. And let me just say one more thing. I know I mentioned Pantera, but even that guitar solo was very Pantera-like. I don't know about the guitar solo, but I know more about the groove. The groove, the groove, of, the groove, the groove. of the song, very Pantera-like. But even the, the, that whammy bar on the guitar solo, I mean, that was so dime bag. That that was the... the oh, come on, man. The, this whole track has such a huge Pantera vibe to it. And I love it. I love it. I, I Honestly, I fucking love this track. Yeah, it's good. I, I fucking love this track. All right, guys, let us know your thoughts on this song, on Obituary. Their new record comes out in 2023. And the main question to be asked right now is, are you going to the tour? Yeah. Are you going to be at the tour? What tour stop are you going to? What band are you most excited to see? Outside of Amon and Marth, I'm sure that's probably one of the ones that everybody's going to be excited to see. They're the headliners after all. But who are you excited to see? Uh, what are your thoughts and expectations? Hit us up in the comments section, and we'll see you all at the next video. See ya.